Our next guest is here in the studio. We have Jose Caballero, 2020 congressional candidate for California's District 54. 53. 53. Yes. Did I get that wrong? 53. It's fine. That's important. Yeah, that's well, very important. Well, there is no 54. Oh, district, well, that's so. important. <laughs> that's so, uh, thank you so much for being here with us. And just tell me, first of why are you running for Congress? Yeah, I mean, thank you for asking that question. Yeah. Um, one, I'm tired of the feckless leadership of the Democratic Party leadership. Okay. I am tired of the feckless inaction on the impeachment of a admitted criminal, the feckless inaction on healthcare, the feckless inaction on climate crisis, and 20 years of inaction from my opponent, the Democratic incumbent, is it's not gonna cut it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm running against Susan Davis. There's so many things there that I wanna yes. break down. So let's just get to it. Specifically, why does Rep Susan Davis need to be unseated? Because I read that you said you know she hasn't followed through on a lot of the progressive policies she ran on. Explain that for viewers and voters who may not know what you mean. Absolutely, um, so she runs on an aggressive policy of healthcare. Mm -hmm. so, so she says you know I'm gonna protect and give access to healthcare, yet she fights for the ACA. She doesn't mention Medicare for all, she doesn't, she hasn't signed on to the bill. In fact, out of uh, all the Congress people in, in, in Congress for the state of California, 53, she's one of 20 that hasn't signed on to Medicare for All. So she's behind the curve. And I think that she's following a lot of the steps of Nancy Pelosi because they seem to campaign a lot together. Um, she was slow on the Green New Deal. It was after our candidacy that when she decided to slide over um, after the protests from the Sunrise Movement as well as um, 350. Um, our candidacy helped her push the rest of the way on that. She is on the Workforce and Education Committee, yet she hasn't done anything other than pass really lackluster policy, such as making sure that she wants to reduce the loan interest rates to, to save the country like a billion dollars a year. But mm -hmm. that's that's a drop in the bucket compared to what we have. So all of her policies are just like window dressing. There isn't really anything bold coming out of her office. And she's only passed two bills. So so that's, so that's a big problem as well. What do you say to people who critics who say that you know they they don't like this they don't they they are nervous about the idea of kind of primarying um, other Democrats who say that the main focus should be Trump and Republicans who support him. What do you say to to those people? Well, what I say to these people, if you care about health care uh -huh. and you really want to make sure that you want health care passed, and we let's say we get a Bernie Sanders president, okay, and and we are we have a health care for all bill on the floor ready to be passed with a president that's ready to sign it, and then it's our establishment Democrats will be the first ones in line to sign against it. So we cannot allow that to happen. That's why we have to primary these ineffective. Democrats. Democrats. So you're walking and chewing gum at the same absolutely, time, essentially. Absolutely. Let's get back to what you said about um, uh, impeachment, because that's what I think every voter is thinking about and talking about right now. Because there was a lot of talk about impeachment from a, from a lot of people who were running for Congress, a lot of people who were rerunning yes. for Congress and were elected, and a lot of new people who were elected. And then I hear from a lot of voters that they feel like nothing's happening. That's right. Where, where and you've already, I can't think, kind of implied where yeah. you stand. But tell me why and uh, break that down. Um, a little more. Well, he is an admitted criminal. Uh -huh. I mean, he's one on national TV. He's admitted to the things that he's done, the obstruction of justice. You you can read the Mueller report. You'll see that Mueller clearly stated that it's in the hands of Congress. Mm -hmm. We need to have an, an inquiry on impeachment. That I think it's that simple. Susan Davis and other establishment Democrats will be the first ones to call out the president for all his problems, but yet won't bring up anything about impeachment. And it's a problem, it's a serious problem in our democratic establishment. I wanna talk about you a little bit because you spent six years in the Navy as yes. a nuclear engineer, do I have that yes, right? And right. so tell me, how do you think your military experience has informed your policy proposals regarding veterans? Absolutely, and thank you for asking that. So, thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to my, my service, when it comes to the policy as a veteran, it really strikes close to my heart. I am furious that we have an incumbent in San Diego in one of the largest military towns in the country uh -huh. that hasn't done anything to alleviate the veteran suicide that is happening. 20 veterans a day are killing themselves. A day, 20 headstones will be, will be placed by the end of this day. It is a tragedy, it pisses me off. It pisses me off that we have all of these elected representatives that say they care about service members, yet they do not do anything. That's why when I took my, my pen to the paper and wrote the hero's promise, mm -hmm. the hero's promise is a bill that is to do one thing, and that is the end suicide of, of our military members, of our brothers and sisters. And if we do not address that, then what are we doing here? 
What are we doing here? Because we lose too many lives. So go to my website, joseforcongress.us slash heroes promise and take a look and see the policies that we're putting not only on the active duty side, but also the veteran side. It is the progressive message, that's what we need to do. And, and, and it, just, it just drives me crazy that somebody that sat on the Armed Forces Committee for decades has not done anything to alleviate this problem. I've lost two shipmates personally wow. to, to suicide and I was a reactor operator. 20 veterans a day? A day. Wow. Yes, yes, and that's from the Department of Justice. Uh -huh. that, 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 I mean, sorry, the DOD, that, right. that's the DOD numbers. So, so if you put the math to that, that is 139,000, over 139,000 veterans have killed themselves after 9-11. So we have so many people dying from war, but yet more people die from the wounds when they come back. And that's why the hero's promise is important. That's why we're gonna be pushing this policy forward. And we're leading on this. And we need more progressive veterans to push these policies forward to tell the truth of what's going on. Because it's not about bombs, it's not about planes, it's not about ships, it's about the people that are serving. They're the ones that are putting their lives on the line, giving the ultimate sacrifice. The least we can do is promise them a safe journey home. And I hate to jump around here, but yeah, we only have a few, we have, we have about five minutes, yes, which is a sure. long time in TV time, but I wanna try to get for through sure. as much Absolutely. as people can get to know you. Yeah. So um, the, uh, over the weekend today, a lot of the focus, rightfully so, has been on Trump's racism. Yes. This weekend, his kind of racist uh, tweet outburst and the response or lack of response from our political leaders. Where do you stand on that? What did you see? What were your thoughts when you saw what he was tweeting over the weekend? Well, I just see uh, his dangerous words are stoking more hatred to four women of color mm -hmm. that are strong, bold, progressive leaders that we adore and treasure. Tre they're they're tr national treasures, yeah, I'd they like are. to say. Mm -hmm. So for him to go out and attack them when they're newly in is is irresponsible and dangerous and should be and he should be held account for it. Absolutely, he should be held account for it. So so yeah, I think he should be condemned and no one should allow that to happen. So as a congressman, how do you plan to help protect women's rights? Um, well, I mean, it's sad that 2019 we have to ask that question. It is, but, but yeah, here um, we are, right? Yeah, here we are. Um, really following women's lead. Uh, as a man, I have to say, following the strong women that push those policies forward and standing and voting by their side, standing in solidarity. I mean, that's as much as I can say about protecting women's rights. Obviously, a, a woman's right to choose should be should be uh, maintained. Absolutely. I, I don't think I've heard many candidates say, you know. I'm not a woman, I'm gonna sit back and support the women. I, I like yeah, that. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> I like that. All right, um, immigration reform, where do you stand? Um, I believe that we should have a one page intake that checks their criminal background and then goes right, and then they can get a working permit once they come back clear, get a working permit, then we can just track them. Let them pay the taxes, let them do all of the things that American citizens do because they wanna provide for our economy. So we can do that and give them a court date. I believe that we should also send more administrators to the border to protect, uh, to fix the bottleneck that is happening as well. What do you see, um, what do you think, what goes through your mind when you see what is, I think, rightfully being called concentration camps at the border and when we see how human beings are being treated? Absolutely, it's miles away from our district, uh -huh. you know, and, and it is a disaster. It should be criminalized. Um, we, we have concentration camps at our borders. I mean, we have people drinking out of toilets. Uh, we have children getting sick and dying, not seeing their families, sleeping with the lights on. Right. You know, these things are cruel and unusual and shouldn't be in our country, so I will fight every Every day until we end those, for sure. One of the most popular policies right now from presidential candidates, student loan debt forgiveness. Yes, I have been for it since I've announced my candidacy. Um, we need to have that. I have student debt myself as a veteran because I decided to get higher education. So it's a big problem. And so I'm for the cancellation of student debt and, for, and education for all, 100%. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, I do wanna say though, um, as, as, a, as a leader, of, of you know running here in, in San Diego, we have already started building a coalition called the Progressive Wave. Mm -hmm. These Progressive Wave are candidates that have signed on to the, the TYT Progressive Economic Pledge, have uh, running against Democratic incumbents, and are, are standing up for policy like the hero's promise. That's what we're doing. You can actually go to the website, just went live. It is uh, the, pro uh, the progressivewave.org, that's where it's at. And, and I also wanna say my strategy for winning this election is knocking every door. 
So really? we, we pay $15 an hour to our canvassers because my profession is actually consulting, actually uh-huh. field consulting work. So I've done this before. So we're gonna pay our workers, we, sign, we proudly signed on to the campaign worker pledge where they're gonna get paid a living wage, $15 an hour, where they're gonna be able to get worker labor rights protections and we're gonna try to get them healthcare as well. And we're the only campaign, one of the only campaigns that have officially taken that pledge because of the problems. Now I've had a democratic establishment uh, 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 Staffer, Uh tell me that that is the stupidest thing he's ever heard, that there's no way you're gonna be able to hold up a campaign, paying people so much, and win. I want the TYT army to prove them wrong (laughs) because if you donate to our campaign, you are donating to a living wage for a family in San Diego. That is how we do it. So donate to our campaign because we are taking that pledge seriously. We are going to pay our workers a living wage because we practice what we preach. If we sign the TYT progressive economic pledge, then you better pay your workers a living wage. Absolutely, yeah, one could say you are not gonna be able to win, but you probably shouldn't be able to win if you're not willing to pay your employees a living wage. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So so that's how that's how we're gonna win this campaign on people power. Well, I had so much more to ask you, oh, but sorry. unfortunately time is up. Oh. I think that was a great interview. Oh, I feel like I, I know you very well oh, at this wonderful. point. Yeah, Good. thank you so much. Thank Thanks so much for being for, here. And yes. one more time, can we get his website and all of the information back up on the screen for us? If possible, please, thank you. There you go, JoseForCongress.us. Everything's there, all the information there. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you you for being here. I appreciate it. All right, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.